Oh, for those who like this, even though I think it's not so many because of the view count, but anyway, it's a long time since I had the last recording of this, so I am gonna do this right now here, because I practically don't know what to play right now, so why not just a thing that I neglected way too much, even though it... it it is interesting, the story, but I know it will go on for a couple of more hours. And there's just so much other things I can play and do, but... On the other hand, it drags me always back to this game. That That's my own conscious, but... Never mind that. Let's get on with G Senjo no Mo. Okay, this is what happened last time. And here we go on. This is kind of hard to believe. What is? The great Azai-san actually asking for help? Usami and I sat in the coffee shop, Lapis Lazuli, a little after 6 o'clock. This popular hangout becomes a restaurant at night. I never ask for your help. But what a strange pairing. You and I? I'm concerned about what we should do in the event that someone mistakes us for a couple. You're pretty annoying, you know that? I know, I know. I'm well aware that you hate me. Definitely, don't be so dramatic. <laughs> Let's go with don't be so dramatic. I don't hate you. I personally really, really like your character. Uh, especially the art style. Oh, what's this? I didn't want to do that. Oh, please, I just have no interest in you. Dot dot. This is actually more cool to say. If, if you hate someone, you only can hate people you have some kind of feelings for them. And if you just plain ignore their existence or something like this, this hurts even more. Because you, you not even acknowledge their existence. More or less, even though he does it in some way, and I'm stopped talking now. I'm like that to everyone. What am I saying? She, of all people, isn't someone I can speak openly with. Yet, for some reason, I told her this. Because I made you to do so. Soska. I see. Yusami's eyes showed a little sympathy. Oh. Wait a second. It's the weekend. Why are you wearing your school uniform? Because it's so cute. And, uh, I don't have many clothes. But that's not what you really wanted to talk about, is it? True. I'm here to talk about Mao. I skipped to the point. Yet comes. Tension appeared on Yusami's face. Are you looking for Mao? Are you as well? As uh, are you as well, Azai san? Yes. Why so suddenly? Dot dot dot. What can I tell you, Sami? I can't mention anything about the Azai Corporation. Last night I received a mail, an email. Mao Kara? Dunna. For Mao? What did it say? I can't say for certain that it was from the same Mao, but it said, 
Oh, come, lovely child, oh, come thou with me, for many a game will play there with thee, purely in Hiwagana. That was all. There's no doubt in my mind. That's Mao. What makes you so sure? Yep, she gets straight back to the point. So, why do you want to find Mao? This woman isn't listening to a word I say. No, she just it, wants to know if you're an ally or are you a demon yourself? Wouldn't one normally treat such a occurrence as a prank? I'm helping my papa with his work. Didn't Tsubaki tell you about that? Mao's in the way of your dad's work? Precisely. I'm just trying to help papa. And what exactly does your father do? That's rather direct. I can't tell you that. Okay. I see. Can't tell me, eh? I remember that. Wow, the, I have a deja vu of all the Telltale games. She will remember that. What do you mean by that? So, what about you? Why are you looking for Mao? I have a reason. A reason? What reason? I can't tell you that. Damn! What did you expect? If you are not honest with her, she will not be honest with you. Then at least riddle me this. What clues have you come across so far? Clues, eh? You saw me close to eyes. Mao wa Nihonjin. Moskwa, Nihongo ni se to see. Nihon no onga kyoiko ugeta koto no aru ningen des. Mao is Japanese, or at least well versed in the Japanese language. He has also received typical Japanese musical training and education. Ah! I suppose that seems likely. Oh, come, lovely child, oh, come thou with me. For many a game I will play there with thee. The way he translated Goethe's poem here just weeks of a German language textbook in Japan. Furthermore, people outside of Japan know that the Japanese language uses kanji. Play game. These are all simple enough kanji that even foreigners would know to use them properly. Since he used hiragana, despite that, we can probably assume that he was intentionally going for a creepy vibe and that he enjoys playing around with people in order to get a reaction out of them. I think I changed her voice too much, even though I think uh, I... I sound very similar if I speak all of them, but yeah. But I don't get this hiwagana and kanji. I know those are kind of signs you use to write the language, but I don't know this particular difference in them. This girl came up with that much using just a single line of words. So, and, at the very least, Mo is someone who knows your email address. True, nevertheless, 
This isn't enough evidence to single out anyone. So, can I take that to mean you have a lot of friends? You're not here to profile me. What about you? Me. You transferred schools at a bizarre time. Did you do it to find Mao? Correct, but... But what? May I order some food? Huh? G go ahead. Come to think of it, she's only had water so far. Well then, I'd like roasted fish set. They won't have it, can Can't, you can tell that just by looking at this place. Oh, uh, they won't have it, can't you... Oh, this is a misspelling. Can't you tell that just by looking at this place? There's an unnecessarily can in it. No, I'm not used to high-class restaurants, so I never know what's on the menu. So you do have a cute side. Oh, sorry for being on the cute side of disgusting. I take that back. She's not cute at all. It just doesn't feel right when they don't list the set meals on the back of the menu. Yusami stared at the menu, giving off the aura of a normal teenage girl for once. I just order something for you. Is there anything you don't like? Tomato. <laughs> and you say she isn't cute? Come on, that was cute as heck. T tomatoes, actually. I I thought it would be cute to say that. Actually, I just thought it would be cute to say that I totally screwed up that line, but can you forgive me for that? <laughs> dot dot dot. I ignored Yusami and placed our order quickly. As you said earlier, Azai-san, I'm here in Tomanbetsu City in pursuit of Mao. In pursuit? You've been following him for a while? Yes, I've been searching for him Yes, I've been searching for him for years. And you still haven't found him? Wait, for years? How old are you? So, uh, according to the game, every character is 18 years old and older. So, I assume her age about 20-something? So, if she's chasing him for years, I would say at least... Four, four, five years, five and less years. So she is chasing him for since he is she is fifteen at least. So this is rather strange. You still haven't found him? No. But I have been beginning to grasp Mao's criminal methods lately. The waiter poured some orange juice into her cup. Yusami sucked it up little by little, like a woodpecker. <laughs> the way you drink is disgusting. <laughs> Just sorry! If you are not reading this for yourself, even though I'm reading it. <laughs> I just can't help but to laugh before you even hear it. Sorry for being like a penguin. <laughs> that was nothing like a penguin. Anyway, for example, Mao always uses children for his crimes. Dot dot dot. 
この町で少年窃盗団が逮捕された事件はご存知ですか Did you hear about the recent arrest of a gang of young thieves? It happened around the end of last month.No, I didn't. おや、情報通の浅井さんにしてはニュースも見てないんですかワイドショーでもうるさくやってたくらいっすよ。Oh, you seem so well informed, yet you don't even watch the news? Even the talk shows haven't been able to shut up about it. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. I read two newspapers a day, and I check the news on my cell phone every chance I get, so why? まあいいです。簡単に言うと、5人組のグループが消費者金融の金庫を襲撃したんですよ。Well, anyways, a group of five kids raided a consumer's loan reserve. それもただの1件じゃなくて3ヶ月で約10店舗被害総額は5000万にも及ぶそうです And not only once there were 10 raids within 3 months supposedly the losses hovered around 50 million yen どうして世間をにぎわせたかというと少年たちがいわゆる悪徳金融と呼ばれる闇金しか狙わなかったからですまあ義族を気取ってたわけですね The thing that caught the public's attention, though, was that these kids only targeted what you would call loan sharks, really corrupt guys. They were probably going for some kind of Robin Hood image. Dots. It seems they were very good at what they did. They used tricks one usually sees in jobs done by American crime records. The five of them moved together as one. Then how did they get caught? どうも、金をめぐって仲間内で揉めたらしいですね。There was some infighting because the money wasn't shared equally. Something about this made my heart race. Oh, yeah, it's about money, right? So basically, what happened was the brain behind the operation, Mao, taught the kids how to commit crime and let them carry it out. Which makes this incident identical to the one I'm investigating now. Which in turn resembles the way that I, as the brain of the Azai Corporation, use people. Mao は子供こそ最大の手駒だと思っているんです。Mao believes that children make the best pawns. 世間慣れしてなくて純真な心を持つ子供たちなら、早すく悪の道に引きずり込むことができます。Since they lack of experience, their naive tendencies ensure That they can be brought easily to the path of evil. That's exactly what Azai Gonsu thought when he took me in. Still, that bit of news along brought you to Tomanbetsu? Hi. Tengakari ga areba. Kanarazu watashi mo oi kagemas. Yes, I'll follow any trail I find. You're pretty persistent. Okage de. 引っ越し代がかさんでいますよ。Wait, what? That persistence has cost me a pretty penny in moving charges. You saw me grinned. What? Moving charges? しかし、今回は確信しています。But this time, I know for sure. Hmm? 今度こそ、魔王と対峙できます。This time, I can challenge Mao head on. Why? Because while I was chasing him, I found you. She was staring at me again, as if seeing through the depths of my pupils. Pupils, not pupils, pupils. So the thing you have in your eye. The so called gate to your soul. Me? My heart jumped again. 
Usami drank the juice in her disgusting way once more, and then said, So, you are going to be a hero, huh? Then, I'll... Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. My memory felt jumbled and disorganized, leaving me in discomfort. What happened? Did you put something in his drink? No. Yusami, I'm sorry. I took out two 10,000 yen bills and placed them on the table. I don't feel so well. I, I'm heading out. Wait, what? His, he got all he got all fuzzy because someone implies that he could become a hero? Soska. I see. Remember to return the change next time. I stood up and sighed. Contact me if you discover anything about Mao. Hi. Okay. Let's find Mao together. I left the restaurant without looking back. What's up? What happened to him? Kyosuke kun. Okay. The wind caused by him as he stepped outside. A horde of tall buildings stood all around him, blocking the moonlight. Not yet entirely awake. Mao walked up the steps like a sleepwalker, wandering purposelessly through the night. Usami, Haru. A name slowly emerged from his lips. A girl appeared from the sea of his memory. Wait, there's no plot twist that that he ends. And Mao are one and the same person, isn't is there? No. Split personality disorder? No, no, I don't think so. It's just a jump thing. I I no. A gallant heroic figure. I remember now. Mao felt his head clear as confidence filled his heart. Felt his head clear as confidence filled his heart. What? Mao felt his head clear as confidence filled his heart. Oh, okay. So, Usami no musume ka. I see. I see. The daughter of Usami. I see. The snapshots in his memory snapped into place. Kishi ni watashi o sagashite iru no daro na. Probably trying her best to find me. And not only Yusami. Azai Gonsu and his wild beasts should all be angrily scoring for Mao right now. Depending on the situation, the plan may have to be changed. There was still time to revise it before Mao's magnum opus was set into action. Even the slightest obstacle obstacle could be a premature end to the long-awaited fruit of his ambition. Still, I must give Yusami Haru her fitting punishment. <laughs> it might be fun to have a strong hero as a rival. A number of intricate plans began to come together in Mao's head. Yusami Haru, eh? The little hero has finally grown up. Let this girl pay for her parents' sins. First, Allow me to gawk the hero's capabilities. Let's play a little game. Yusami Haru, how far can you go? 
Mao disappeared into the darkness of downtown, to Manbetsu city with light footsteps. His dead his head didn't ache anymore. The cool night drew its curtains. Is this still chapter one? On this particular Sunday, like on any other, Central Boulevard hosted a sea of people. And as usual, Yusami Haru walked to her part-time job with her head hung low. She moved forward slowly, ignoring the people around her. Looking depressed as always, aren't you, Yusami? Ah, Tenjo, Oh, um, morning, boss. A bearded man in, a, in an apron welcomed Haru. Kami, Didn't I tell you to get your hair cut? Oh no, please don't cut your hair, it's beautiful. Sorry. Please don't bring up my hair again, or I'll have to get angry. Then I guess I'll have to let this one slide. Sorry. How about slightly? The manager shook his head in response as he opened a crate of perfumes. So, Yusami, why do you always wear your school uniform? Because it's cute. Yet, you don't wear makeup? I think I'm plenty hot without it. The manager let a disappointment sigh escape from his lips. Oh. You don't have many friends, do you? I have lots of friends, especially you. You are like the father to me. Like a father to me. Hey, I'm not even 30 yet. How we yawn as she stretched her back and neck after preparing herself for a day's work. She entered the store. The usual white hold the sign out front and shout to people trying to get them to come in. It's strange. Her voice her voice changes over the course of the whole game. She's sometimes really a little more pitched, then it's a little bit more deep, then it's a little more a mix of both, and her voice is hard to pinpoint. Uh, yeah, but before that, the manager reached into the pocket of his apron. What's that? A guy with long blonde greaser style hair came by a little while ago. He told me to give you this. It was a folded piece of paper. A letter, perhaps. So, was that guy a friend of yours? Eh? Eh? <laughs> Nobody says squeezer anymore, boss. And no, I don't have such a friend. The manager was a good man, despite, as Hau was suspected, frequently lying about his age. Hau glanced absent mindedly at the manager's beard as she unfolded the note. And after scanning its contents, she couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. The penmanship itself gave Haru an eerie, unsettled feeling. The writer had used a straight, straight edge to trace. Wait, what? The writer had used a straight edge, oh, to trace his strokes, presumably to camouflage his true handwriting. 
Some letters had even been cut from magazines and newspapers. After taking a deep breath, Hawu asked, That blonde greaser, what did he say? Why do you ask? The manager raised his eyebrows. The girl before him was not the Yusami Hawu he employed. Her piercing eyes fired straight through his entirety. He asked if Yusami Haru worked here part time. Is that all? Huh? Oh. Y yeah. Haru tensed up. Time seemed to have stopped. Her mind analyzed the facts with incomprehensible speed. And finally, as if to signify her understanding, she raised her head. S sorry, boss, but I can't work today. Wait a minute! You can't just decide on your own! I'm sorry, but this is an emergency! She bowed deeply. You know, I, I could tell from your interview that you were a few strings short of a piano. S sorry for being such a weirdo. まあ、今まで一度も遅刻も早引きもしてないし、バイトなのに進んで残業してくれるし、頼んでもいないのに着ぐるみを作って宣伝をしてくれたりと、真面目なところもあるわけだが… Well, you never been late before. You volunteer for overtime when you're only a part-timer, and you even use a penguin costume to draw customers. Even though I never ask you to, you do seem pretty hardworking at least. I appreciate your kind words and all, but to be fair, that costume is just a hobby of mine. The manager thoughtfully scratched his head, beard. Alright then, but in exchange, I want you working overtime tomorrow. Hawu flashed a big happy grin. Love this, Ninja. I love you so much, boss. Wow, this is a really good boss. Hawu dashed out into the busy streets. She parted the crowds like a boulder splitting through a fierce current. Without letting the deluge of people slow her pace, she marched forward through Central Boulevard. As she moved, Hawu thought about the strange letter. Oh come, lovely child, oh come thou with me. For many a game I will play there with thee. From this, the first line, Hawu could tell this letter indicated a challenge. The rest of the letter served to ignite her heart into a mighty conflagration. What? For at its end was her mother's name. At its end? I am here in Tomanbetsu city. Let us play a game of tag. I will be attending the hunt immediately. To Kaoru. Kaoru is the name of Haru's beloved mother. She was a violinist. She took Haru with her as she traveled all around the world, captivating the world over with her marvelous performances. Her mother was always so gentle, yet so strong. No. Oh, I love this pig. This serious face, this fiery ruby, I think it's... Wait, yeah, it's a ruby color, isn't it? Oh, Mao. Calm down, she told herself. If you let your emotions get the better of you, then you've already lost. She couldn't believe that Mao would actually contact her. Oh, come, lovely child, oh, come there with me. For many a game, I will play there with thee. And that particular... Schubert piece, no matter how much the child cried out about the devil, his father refused to believe that the devil even existed. No one could find this fabled Erlkönig, this devil, this Mao. 
But Elkönig doesn't translate into devil. Well, not at least me. Elkönig just means... König means king and El is just a name. And together it's Elkönig. El so El King or something like that. Or I know even less about literature in my own country than I should. <laughs> If no one else can find you, then I'll smoke you out of hiding myself. It's time. It's now noon. Wearing a black suit, Mao blended in naturally along the crowd of businessmen in the business district. The music though! The music is great! Da da da! So tense, so full of tension! As he walked among the people there, Mao's heart swelled with malicious anticipation. It's been a while since he sent out that letter of challenge passed on from one person to the next. The letter should have arrived in Yusami's hands by now. What would she do when she saw that letter? I wonder if she'll search around the city aimlessly. Mao looked at the cell phone in his hand. If Yusami isn't a total idiot, she will soon call this number. First, let's see just how cunning you really are. What number? Haru already knew where to go. She didn't waste a single minute. Even though the letter from Mao looked meaningless at first glance, he made sure to place a hint within those words. The coffee shop Lapis Lazuli. The same place that Kioske took her yesterday. She pushed open the door and walked in. She immediately surveyed the per premises. If Haru's reasoning was correct, Mao should have come by here. However, she could not find anyone like him among the customers. Just then, a man who appeared to be an employee called out to her. Welcome, a table for one. Haru thought for a second before answering confidently. My name is Yusami Haru. Excuse me, but did someone leave a message for me? The host seemed relieved upon her words. So, you are Yusami-san? Yes, someone did indeed leave a message. As she said this, he disappeared behind the counter. After a while, he returned with a small bag. Someone told me that when, it's, when I see a strange girl with long hair, I should give this to her. Who left this in your hand? Hands. Hawa asked as she took the bag from him. A young girl? But she said someone else asked her to do this. Hawa immediately realized that the young girl was one of Mao's children. Odds were he was using several intermediaries to get in contact with her. It'd be difficult to trace any of these agents back to Mao. Hey, didn't you come here with your boyfriend last night? Kare-san? Boyfriend? Chigaunokai? He wasn't your boyfriend? I'm kind of embarrassed. Hawa left the coffee shop after offering her thanks. Oh, there's a serious face. As she walked out, Hawa opened the bag. She found only a thin cell phone inside. This is... She examined the cell phone from top to bottom. It was an old model of disposable cell phone. Here on Central Boulevard you can find a lot of unemployed foreigners selling these phones. Actually, um, those... Those phones you can just buy and throw away. They are actually forbidden in Japan now. I learned this while I watched Lost Pause. He was about... 
he played a visual novel about uh, visiting Japan, and there you can't buy this kind, those kind of phones that easily. So maybe this game plays before or after this law was new, or it was in Tokyo. I don't know. It was somewhere forbidden. So even no, this doesn't make sense. Let's just head on with it. Ba -ba -ba, unemployed for you selling these phones. Even if the police were to investigate this matter, they wouldn't be able to find the phone's original purchaser. purchaser. It would appear that Mao knows how to cover his tracks. How would turn on the phone? There was only one number listed. The number was listed as Mao. Does he want me to call? Does he want me to call him? Her heart raced. She dialed the number with sweaty hands. At that moment, the din of the city no longer reached her ears. After precisely ten rings. A weak vibration came from the left side of his chest. Mao grinned. Someone's calling. Trying to suppress his excitement, he took out the phone. He waited for his caller to speak first as he imagined Yusami's beautiful voice. Mo, right? He was taken aback by the abrupt voice. Mo quietly opened his mouth. Did you enjoy reading my letter? There was a brief pause, as if she were gathering her nerves. What do you want? Yusami spoke in a low voice. All I want is to play with you, Yusami. To play such a childish game? You mean that letter? Indeed, that was a bit too simple. That letter was easy to decipher. Dot dot dot. I'm here. I'm here in Tomambetsu City. Let us play a game of tag. I will be attending the hunt immediately. The next line caused Yusami's voice to betray her. She could not conceal her anguish as she recited the final words. Your mother, indeed. She was such a beautiful woman. He intentionally chose biting words as of playing the part of a typical twisted villain, and I love to play those parts. But this did not deter Yusami Haru in the slightest. The key lies with the third line. I will be attending the hunt immediately, right? It looks innocent enough, but within that line, Mao, I discovered your location. Would you be kind enough to explain yourself as well? It was addressed to Kaoru. <laughs> On the surface, my mother's name only served to identify the person receiving the letter, but it's also an important hint. This really was a simple puzzle. It'd be quite disappointed if she couldn't even solve this. The purpose behind this puzzle lied elsewhere. Huh? That was an unfortunate accident. 
I held nothing personal against her. Again, he tried to play with her emotions. When you change that third, that third line's car to do, you uncover the true message. Yusami ignored Mao's words while continuing to describe her solution to the simple puzzle. In that third line, when you change the car in hand, Kari, to do, even during her last moment, your mother thought of you. The, the line says, I will be attending the duty immediately. At least spare my daughter! She kept begging and pleading with me. Yuri, of course, is Japanese for Lapis Lazuli. During this entire exchange, Yusami Hao did not show a hint of anger. Your mother was... Ah, fuck you! Stop making awkward pauses in the middle of a sentence! Your mother was very strong. I love strong people. What about you? Mao had hoped that his refusal to let the dead rest would unleash the darkness within this girl's heart, that it would reopen long closed wounds. Nevertheless, Yusami said bravely, Although my mother is dead, I am still alive. And I refuse to die until I capture you, Mao. Mao feels satisfied. This girl is daring indeed. Very good. Well then, let's continue with our game of tag, shall we? Even if she lis listened intently to the phone, Haru continued searching for the location of Mao. Ignoring the demon's sketching words, she instead focused on the background noise. After a while, she discovered some clues. I understand now, Haru said. What do you understand? I now know where you are. That sounds quite interesting. Someone is giving a speech near your location. How will gain concentrated on the background noise? Why would she tell him that? Why is she not just going there? Part of the speech included the name of Tomanbetsu City's mayor. So you notice. His tone implied it would be more strange if she hadn't. I can't find out where the speech is being held by going to City Hall. Why is she telling him that? Why is she not just following this noise and just try to hold him back so that he doesn't discover it? That won't be necessary. What? Excellent! You have great observational skills! Hao finally understood the true reason behind Mao's challenge. He wants to test her. She was in a terrible situation. She didn't expect her opponent to find her workplace. Even though Hao still doesn't know his identity, Mao already knows hers. I am at central business right now. Should you be telling me this? 
Do you even know where that is? You've only just moved to this town recently, after all. You certainly know not a lot about me. I know everything about you, hero. When people tell someone they know everything, it's usually to cover up their insecurity at the fact that there may be something they don't know. Mao scoffed at that. You have a sharp tongue as well. He certainly sounded happy, but his words seemed a little artificial. As a result, she still couldn't figure him out. And unfortunately for her, he was always guiding their conversations. Indeed! I wish to know more about you! Otherwise, why would I actively seek you out? Yusami Haru, who hates me so much. Even when Mao talks about himself, he never gives anything important away. There's a big park near Central Business. So? Can you come to the bulletin board there? Will you be waiting for me there, Mao? My, you're so impatient. In order to better understand each other, shouldn't we meet face to face? A very enticing proposal. Unfortunately, I must respectfully decline. It seems Mao has no intention of showing his face. Come, capture me, Yusami Haru. This is a challenge. If you are indeed worthy, then I shall be your opponent. And with that, he hung up the phone. Haru sprang into action. She caught sight of the Sanu Corporation headquarters. The park was nearby, somehow escaping the shadow of the gargantuan skyscraper. It was quite be a beautiful scene. The park was surrounded by an assortment of bustling businesses making its presence even more pronounced. The bulletin board was at the center of the park. Under normal circumstances, it would display the general guidelines and park rules. Today though, it's covered in red graffiti. At first glance, it appears to be the work of local delinquents. Close examination, however, reveals that the makings are actually a rather detailed passage. It was clear that this graffiti was the work of Mao. From here, the hero must choose one of three paths. One path leads to Mao, one path leads to hell, one path leads to heaven. There will be more information on each path. Take care to examine it thoroughly. Truth is written on the path to Mao. Lies are written on the path of hell. Truth, lies and half-truth are written on the path of heaven. Now, can you find where I am? Truth is written on the path to Mao. Lies are written on the path of hell. Two slides and half truths are written on the path to heaven. Three paths. I will immediately begin to search around the park. As was indicated, there should be a message located near the path. She soon found that message near the park's northern entrance. There was a steep staircase leading to the business district. The handrail of the stone staircase 
bore a short note. In the same glaring red paint and long slender lettering as a message in the park. The exit subway station 10 leads to heaven. She could just barely make it out. Haru immediately absorbed the information. Station te 10 just so happened to be Central Boulevard's main station. Haru could see several red-haired youngsters loitering near the exit. Haru carefully examined her surroundings until she finally saw another message on the handrail. Warehouse number 3 along the docks of the Western District leads to hell. Docks of the Western District? It was too far to reach by foot. However, if she doesn't go to that warehouse, she won't be able to solve the puzzle. Tag, indeed. Do you plan to have me run around the entire city, Mao? <clears throat> Haru walked down the stairs. There were just as many people in this underground passageway as there were on the surface. She bought a ticket and now awaits a subway to the Western District. The music gets on my nerves, it plays for far too long. For someone as poor as Haru, the 250 yen ticket really is a painful expense. After about an hour, she finally reached the harbor. The winter sea quietly splashed against the docks. This part of the city is deserted on Sundays. Thus, she found the warehouse without fighting the crowds she had in earlier. The third warehouse number was clearly marked on its closed shutters. Haru searched for a message from Mao. She found a suspicious slip of a paper on the shutter. This is not the path to heaven. After reading this final clue, Haru pinched her forehead. Now she finally has all the pieces. Which of the three paths should she take? The staircase near the park? The exit of subway station 10? Warehouse number 3 along the docks of the Western District. And the pass to Mao. The pass to heaven. The pass to hell. Which message corresponds to which pass? Obviously, she needs to pick the pass to Mao. In addition, truth is written on the pass to Mao. Lies are written on the pass to hell. Truth lies and half-truth are written on the path to heaven. Now Howard thinks about where she found each note. One, on the handrail of the stairwell near the park with the note. The exit of subway station 10 leads to heaven. Besides the exit of subway station 10 was the note. Warehouse number 3 along the docks of the western district leads to hell. So if she found this there, if station 10 leads to heaven, heaven is full of lies and half truth and and truth. Along the docks of western district leads to hell, hell is a way full of lies. At the third warehouse in the western district of the node, this is not the path to heaven. So, if we have this and that, and that is not the path to heaven, it's it's the truth. So the truth means that this is the path to Mao. After sorting everything, she began to analyze the information. Suppose one is a path to Mao. In that case, the message found there about Subway Station 10 that it is the path to heaven would have to be true. So, oh. So then, the answer is... To find the answer, you only need to do some calculations. Just as she was in the middle of thinking, Haru's cell phone rang. Are you near the third warehouse yet? Mao must have calculated the time she needed to reach here and timed her call accordingly. I just got here. Did you receive the message then? I'm sorry! Did you receive the message then? This is not the path to heaven. Oh. Yes, I just found it. 
Mao glanced at his watch. You really did spend a lot of time preparing for this. I can't help but laugh when I imagine Mao running around the city, watching these hints. I didn't have to do it personally. But I guess I'm honored that my work has made you so happy. In other words, you have people working for you, right? There are always people attracted to evil. But that's not important right now. Did you gather all the information? Oh. Yes. Mao thought to himself, this is just a test. Any capable person should be able to find the correct answer. Think about it carefully. I will be waiting for you. If you can't find the answer in 5 minutes, then I'll give you a passing grade. See you later, hero. Just as he was about to hang up. A third warehouse. どの道がどこに続くかは、6通りの場合がある。その中で、魔王にたどり着く道のメッセージに嘘が書いてあることになる組み合わせと地獄に続く道のメッセージに真実が書いてあることになる組み合わせを除けば、おのずと正解が見え
The sun had set only moments ago. In its place came the strong winter wind, carrying a chill and dark clouds in its wake. Specks of light snow fell on the shoulders of Haru's school uniform before quickly dissipate, dis, dissipate, dissipating. Pedestrians flooded the business district. At the bottom of the government office stairway, Haru awaits Mao's appearance. He will. He will come. After that exchange, Mo played another three hours of tag with her. Again and again, he tested her mental prowess. In order to make herself worthy of being Mo's op worthy of being Mo's opponent, Haru ought to have shown enough of her strengths to gain the right to challenge Mo. Oh, come, lovely child! Oh, come thou with me. For many a game, I will play there with thee. Mo may think this is just a game, but this is a battle Haru will put all his strength into. Mo's final question was this. If Mo appears at the bottom of the stairs of the government office, then he was not at the top of the stairs. Thus, if he was at the top of the stairs, will Mo not appear at the bottom of the stairs? If Mo, Mo appears at the bottom of the stairs of the government office, then he was not at the top of the stairs. Thus, if he was at the top of the stairs, will Mao not appear at the bottom of the stairs? The conclusion, if he was at the top of the stairs, Mao will not appear at the bottom. If she wants Mao to appear, Hao must not be at the top of the stairs. In order to meet with Mao, Hao needs to stay at the bottom of the stairs. Only he is taking too long. She could not see anyone like Mao among the passing people. Did I make a mistake? Just as she started to panic, she heard someone call her name. <laughs> okay, I think this is... Oh. No, hell no. I think this is more than enough for that episode. I know it's kind of a cliffhanger, but I need to end this episode now. It's going on for over an hour now. And I hope you enjoyed it so far. Leave a like if you did. And I will hopefully see you in the next chapter of Jason Joe No Stay tuned for more.